Hello, this is Kenny Xie speaking. In this section, we're going to talk about the component of the single cell. In the previous section, we've been mentioned about the, uh, the core component of a single cell is the MEA, the membrane electrode assembly. But uh, how to evenly distribute the reactant to from outside the cell into the, the cell and uh, conduct the current in and out uh, from the uh, catalyst layer to the external the, the, the cell outside that's um, a question that would be need uh, other component to make this happen so this one we're going to talk about a single cell what the peripheral component beside the MEA Previously, we mentioned about the five layer MEA is composed of a proton exchange membrane, which conduct the proton, but also electronically isolate the cathode and anode, so they won't have any electric shortage. The actual electrochemical reaction taking place on the anode catalyst layer and the cathode catalyst layer. And outside the catalyst layer, are the anode gas diffusion layer and the cathode diffusion layer. Those layer will be evenly distribute the reactant and the current in and out, uh, and also uh, improve the utilization of the catalyst layer. So that's the flow channel and outside. The flow channel really uh, to carry out the reactant from those channel even it through the gas diffusion layer and then to the catalyst layer. But also the electron uh, generated on the anode will be uh, carried out through the gas diffusion layer and then through the flow channel or the graphite plate, what we call the channel plate. But uh, actually for a single cell, the component uh, is more than that. We can show on the next slide. This is an expansion diagram of a, a single cell. Inside the single cell, we can see the first, of course, is the MEA, which uh, had uh, the anode catalyst layer, cathode catalyst layer, and the separator, which is a conduct, ionic conductive, but electronically is the insulate. And um, next to the MEA, is a GDL gas diffusion layer we've been mentioned. Since the it had to be uh, carry transport the gas in and out, so it's a porous medium, and the, even the outside the outskirt of the uh, is also porous. So the gas will leak out from the outside here. So we need uh, the gasket to prevent its possible leakage, and the gasket is made of. Uh, flexible Teflon, so it's a chemical inner, but also uh, uh, seal the gas, so that will not uh, let the gas leak out from the outside here. And also acting as a insulation, so prevent the anode castle will be getting in touch, especially for the flow channel here. We call the graphite plate. The graphite plate actually it might be the graphite powder or carbon powder mixed with resin, phenolic resin, and uh, compressed into a plate. And on the surface of the plate had a uh, carve into the, the flow channel. So the reactant, the gas, will be, uh, when it flows through the channel, will be able to evenly distribute through the GDL to the electrode surface. And also the current or the electron generated from the anode will be flow out through the GDL and onto the graphite plate. Because this graphite plate is in touch with the core uh, component for the fuel cell, it may be corrosive, so it had to be used carbon material to, uh, to make sure it will not corrode, uh, but also conduct the current. And the outside will be the current collector. Actually, the current is carried out uh, by the current collector in and out of the cell. 
The reason we had to need a current collector is uh, the electronic conductivity of the current collector is uh, more than a thousand times higher than the graphite plate. This current collector usually made of uh, copper, maybe plate, sun marble, metal, but usually is high, highly electronic conductive. But because uh, um, we use a graphite plate to to isolate to prevent any uh, uh, corrosive gas or the environment, so um, they will be not corroded. Um, but uh, this will be highly conductive, so the current can be distributed evenly through the uh, graphite plate to the GDL. And then we had M plate. The purpose for the M plate is uh, try to um, conduct or the transmit the screw pressure evenly to the center because of the, the channel graphite plate, the channel plate, and then the GDL and then electro here need a pressure to compress together to reduce possible interfacial resistance electronic resistance between the graph plate GDL or GDL to the catalyst layer. You need the pressure to press down to reduce the interfacial pressure. But you cannot make a uh, puncture hole and make a screw to tighten it up. So you had to had a, a screw tied up on the peripheral of the graphite plate to uh, to the uh, so the this one had to enough pressure to press on the GDL. So this one end plate are very thick and then we will come convey the, the screw pressure to the center evenly distributed so the set on the center pressure can be evenly compressed. So this is a basic key component for a single cell that for the MEA, the GDL, gas kit, graphite plate, current collector and the end plate. Why we need a channel plate or the graphite plate in this matter, we can uh, describe in the next slide. The gas inlet uh, will be from here, um, in and out. Over here, the channel is over the other side of the graphite plate, so we cannot see it, but we can see it from here. The gas inlet coming out and through a, pump, a hole through here, and then the, chain, the flow and then going out from this, going out. So this is uh, a gas outlet from here. This slide will be um, uh, this, uh, describe how the, the function of the channel play or the graphite play in a single cell. The, the channel, the flow channel or the that's the flow channel over here and then the we, we be mentioned be, before uh, over here the five layer MEA uh, outside will be the flow channel plate. The channel plate is usually made of graphite or carbon powder so we sometimes people uh, call it as a carbon plate or graphite plate but on the surface you should have a flow channel. The purpose flow channel is to uh, carry the gas through those uh, channel so the reactant will be evenly uh, distributed through the entire channel and uh, will be able to diffuse through the GDL to the catalyst layer for the hydrogen and on the other side will be the air or the oxygen will be from the, the other side carried through the GDL to the uh, castle catalyst layer. The current will be conducted also because the electronic conductive those channel play so it will be carried out from the flow channel, uh, the current collector through the flow channel and then to the GDL and then to the catalyst layer on the anode side and then on the cathode side also. The cathode, the the current flow is opposite to the electronic flow, so over here the drawing is for the current flow. It's opposite than the electronic flow. So just let you know that. Um, the things, um, so the flow channel, the function is uh, distribute the reactant in onto the electrode or the product out. 
because on the, the it will generate the water, the water will be carried out through the flow channel outside the single cell. But also is a conduct the current in out to the electron. And actually, it is also as the insulation chemical prevent any kind of chemical going uh, in touch with the current collector here. The reason we need a current collector is given to the next slide. The this is a uh, the current in and out through actually externally from the single cell and the current uh, uh, flow through the current collector into the cell. This is a current collector. We can see why we need a uh, current collector. This is a cross section of the MEA and the flow channel. The flow channel made of carbon powder or graphite powder, uh, a mixture of graphite, those powder uh, with uh, phenolic resin. So the conductivity edge is not as high as we expect, although it's a electronic conductive. The conductivity actually is somewhere cl close to the semiconductor. So if you had a current flow through those current the flow channel here, the channel play, they might have the voltage drop uh, in this direction because it's not really uh, conductive. So uh, if you had a voltage drop, in that case you had resistance, then most current might be distributed not evenly. The most current may become flow to here rather than go to other place. So we need a, a current collector which is very electronic conductive over here, the current collector. The conductivity for the copper may be more a thousand times or ten thousand times higher than the graphite or carbon plate. So in this case, the current can flow evenly through the current collector and to the channel plate. And then the voltage drop or the voltage loss on the current collector can be negligible. So they can, the uh, very high current flow here and then over here, but uh, they more evenly can be flow through the flow channel, even a dispute into the, uh, the MEA over here and then going out, going out from the castle side here. So the, the current collector, the function is to distribute current evenly onto the channel plane. So this is a typical photo for a single cell. You can see this end plate is very thick and then the screw is a, uh, tied through those holes uh, like this, tied through those holes and then tied it up. And over here, the actual pressure, because it's very thick, so the pressure will be evenly distributed through the center and press on the, the, the GDL and then the electrode. This is a typical nephew membrane, and on this will be the catalyst layer, and then the carbon paper will be pressed on here. This is a gasket. The gasket here is uh, uh, made out of uh, porous teflon. Uh, it's chemical inert, flexible. So when you compress it, you will get, get a uh, sealed gas tight over here. There's a flow chain on the surface. You can see the tiny hole over here. So the, the gas will come out through this hole to the current collector and then to the flow channel here. And then they move and then going out from here, going out. So um, the, the screw will be tightened up. But uh, the screw outside the screw is uh, had a Teflon uh, insulated tube to make sure they will not get a shortage because the screw is electronic conductive. So it should be insulated. Make sure on this side will be the, on the uh, castle. This anode side will not be get a sh current shortage over here. And also the sun insulation. Uh, so make prevent it will be a shortage over here. And um, because the fuel cell is operate, pen fuel cell is operate somewhere around the uh, 60 to 80 degrees Celsius degree, so it's need heated up. In this version, we had a heating element can insert inside the end plate, so can heat up entire cell. Also, there's a tiny hole over here. It's uh, for thermocouple. 
uh, thermocouple, so you can monitor the temperature, you can do the temperature control. And then the gas of hydrogen flows through here and then going out, oxygen or air flow here and then going out from here. So this is the key component uh, in a single cell. And uh, hopefully you can notice uh, what a key component for this one, two, three, four, five, six. The, the first one is a uh, MEA, the membrane electro assembly. The second uh, will be the gas diffusion layer, and this will be the gas kit, and uh, this uh, graphite plate or the channel plate or carbon plate, and this uh, current collector, and this end plate. I hope you will know uh, each one they have their own function, the reason why it will be there. Uh, for a single cell, this uh, summarizes for the single cell. Uh, this is uh, for all the peripheral uh, components for the single cell. And the, key, the core element is the MEA, the membrane electro assembly. The, for the anode castle, is composed of uh, uh, gas diffusion layer, micropores layer, and then catalyst layer. And then the, the membrane is ionic transport, but the ele electronic insulate. So, uh, so far we've been talking about uh, from the uh, cat catalyst to the electro, to the MEA, to a single cell. But uh, for a single cell, it's only uh, output the cell voltage about 0.7 volt, which is very low for practical application. So we need to connect all the single cell in, in series to make a cell stack. That will be give a reasonable output voltage. So next section we'll be talk about the cell stack.